Hey, how's it going guys? Demon Driver here. Thank you for joining me and we are going to do an all-up test on my new scratch-built handmade F-102 Delta Dagger from Convair uh, Interceptor fighter jet of the late 1950s. Came into service around 57, 58. Uh, they made about a thousand of these babies and uh, had six Falcon AIM-4 Falcon missiles or the GAR-1, GAR-2. She had the uh, Hughes MG-10 fire control system tied into the SAGE air defense system of the late 50s, early 60s, defending the North American uh, airspace, United States, uh, Canada. Uh, she do about Mach 1.2, but if this girl can do a little over 100, I'll be happy. But today what we're going to do is we're going to test her flight controls, we're going to run up her ADF, we're going to see what kind of thrust she's putting out, and we're going to weigh her all up to see basically how much she weighs um, in all and uh, in preparation for a maiden flight. It's important to do this stuff before you maiden any of your RC aircraft, especially if it's a handmade scratch-built plane. You should do it on any of your RC airplanes, whether it's an ARF, a kit, uh, scratch-built, ready to fly, almost ready to fly. It doesn't matter. You need to test everything and make sure that the plane is functioning properly before you make a fool of yourself at the RC field. And that's what we're going to do right now. I'm not going to make a fool of myself. I'm going to test the plane. All right, let's go. All right, well, let's give you guys a better look at this girl. Um, I've always been a, uh, had a soft place in my heart for the F-102. Always loved the F-102 and the F-106. The, uh, F-106 is basically the improved version of the F-102. Instead of Mach 1.2, can do over Mach 2. But uh, the mistake they made with the F-106 was they didn't put a gun in it, and they only they knocked its missile load from six AIM-4 Falcons down to four with one Genie, which was just stupid. Even this plane had no guns. Had no guns. It had just six missiles of 24 Zuni rockets, unguided rockets. Um, that would fire from a um, missile bay that was underneath right up in this section right up in here there were six uh, AIM-4 Falcons. Uh, AIM-4 Falcon probably could have shot down a, a Tu-95 bear um, or a bison now you know air-to-air -air combat with this thing Two 25 millimeter cannons or two 20 millimeter guns, the same weapons load as like an F, you know, an F5 or an F20 Tiger Shark, then this thing would have been a monster. But unfortunately, they didn't. Uh, the Air Force just put all of their pride and all of their, uh, all of their uh, um, technology and all of their hope in missiles and probably one of the worst air-to-air -air missiles ever, and that's the AIM-4 Falcon. Could the AIM-4 Falcon shoot down the Hindenburg on fire? Probably. The infrared version, probably. The radar-guided, who knows, range is six miles. So, whatever. But it looks cool. It's a beautiful plane. This is of the, uh, um, of a squadron that flew out of Iceland in the uh, mid-60s. So let's, uh, let's check her flight controls. All right, let's have a look at our flight controls here. Ooh, there we go. All right, here we go. Let's check the rudder. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. All right, here we go. Let's check the rudder. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. All right, it's centering. Uh, it's not exactly centering perfectly, but let's see if I can trim that out a little bit. There we go. Okay, right, left, right, left. Okay, let's check the elevons here. Let's check up, up. Wait a minute. Let's get her set up so that she's on the... Uh... All right, there we go. Unfortunately, I don't want to... I got the flight controls on that foam. I don't want to have them 
I don't have the control horn sitting on there. All right, there we go. All right, right, left turn, right turn, left turn. Um, usually, rule of thumb, right, the right aileron should come up, left one should go down. So, a saying that I have is, the aileron should come up to meet the side you throw. So you get right aileron, the right aileron should come up to meet you. The left aileron should drop. So, right, left, right, left, good. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. That looks pretty good. Let's see what we got here. I love the F-102, man. It's a badass looking jet, man. I got removable fuel tanks down there. All right, right, left, right, left. Up, down, up, up, down. Rudder's a little slow. Rudder servo's a little bit, a little slow. Could be, it could be because the receiver battery I'm using might be a little low on power. Look how responsive those are. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. You can see the area rule in the fuselage of the F-102. It's kind of the Coke bottle effect. The YF-102 didn't have that. It was kind of a straight fuselage, so it limited it, it, its airspeed. Once they gave it the Coke bottle, it upped its uh, airspeed to about um, Mach 1.2. It could do Mach 1.4 in a dive. She could get up to Mach 1. I mean, she could. This plane was not the fastest thing in the world, but it could at least catch up with a bomber. Okay. All right. I'm happy with that. All right. Now that we got her like this, let's check her. Let's check her overall overall weight. Let's check her overall all up weight. Put a piece of foam here. Let's center the let's center this thing. There we go. We got a good scale. Also, all the way up to 20, 25 pounds. So. Let's see how, she, how much she weighs. Now, I'm not going to fly her with the uh, with the tanks on her. Now, what the hell? Just put it right down on this thing. Down. So her all-up weight is just a hair over, it's actually two and a half pounds. So hats are in the air weight, two and a half pounds. Okay, good. I'm going to use this, um, this graphite Turnigy 1.5 milliamp 14 volt. It's basically the same battery, it's just a little bit lower uh, milliamperage, but that's not... I want power right now, I just want to test power and how much power the uh, EDF is drawing, how many amps. And we're going to check that out right now. Okay, power all the way back. Let's go ahead and plug this puppy in. Okay. All right, we got the the beep and then the high beep. When you hear that, doo doo, that's usually telling you that everything's working properly, that the EDF is armed and ready to go. Okay, we got white watt life. Whether you check in the battery or you check in the watt. Let's check the watt draw. Okay, here we go. We're all the way up at 15 volts, 0.3 amps. Okay, hang on, here we go. Hope you guys can see this. All right, let's start to, I'm holding the plane down, making sure she doesn't go anywhere. Let's add some power. Wow, you can feel the, you can feel the air draw. Okay, I only take it up to 50% because I don't want to go beyond that. That's a lot of power. That knocked that puppy over pretty good. Okay. Next. I like, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Alright, next. I'm going to do a thrust test. And I'm going to do a thrust test the old-fashioned way. So I'm going to go ahead and run her up. See what we got. And I can hold it in my hand and I can tell exactly 
exactly the thrust. And I can just tell if she has at least two and a half pounds of thrust or more. If she has less than two and a half pounds of thrust, she's not gonna basically, I can just hold her in my hand and not have to apply any force to hold it. She's gonna basically hold herself on her thrust. So I'm hiding behind, hiding behind this table. So if the worst case scenario, my hand and arm will catch whatever happens. But if anything does happen and you see something hit this table, that would be, it's like having Bigfoot jump, jump in the frame here or having a leprechaun show up with a big uh, truckload of 20 tons of gold. So, I don't think that's going to happen, so. But it's good to be prepared. All right, so let's run her up and see what kind of power she's got. <laughs> say that she has a one-to-one -one thrust away ratio, but I would say that she has at least, at least two pounds of thrust. She got pretty light in my hand. I wouldn't say that she was weightless in my hand, but she was getting there. I think once that we have, uh, once she shot off the um, bungee launcher, at the flight field and she's shot and she has airflow going into these intakes, heading into these intakes, I think we're gonna be in pretty good shape. Well, there you have it. That was the flight control test, the wattage and voltage test, and EDF test and thrust test of my scratch-built F-102 Delta Dagger from Convair, uh, late 50s interceptor with the U.S. Air Force. So uh, don't be surprised if you see a maiden flight in the next couple weeks, okay? And yes, I do build warbirds, for those of you who want to know. I love warbirds. Don't tell anybody, keep this between us, but I love warbirds as much as I love airliners. Oh yeah, love warbirds. Have a soft, soft spot in my heart for warbirds. So, well, as Demon Driver, thank you for joining me. God bless. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.